AI can do a lot of things. It can, it's going to transform the entire world. And I've been using it for seven months. Uh, I like to verify and validate data for myself before I start spitting it out of my face hole. I use it every day. I can go on and on and on about the many, many, many things. I'm bought in. It's changing the world. Done. So when it comes to healthcare, though, there's obviously gigantic things that it can do. Like we talked about yesterday, we talk about robotic AI surgery, and you talk about um, you know, reading, reading data for what the purpose of actually diagnosing people and, and realizing trends and, and there's a lot that it can do, but that stuff is also very far out and it could be very dangerous because of AI. Cause when you talk about actually providing care for someone, for someone, you can have nothing less than perfection and AI, we don't know that we're there yet. Um, in fact, we're not there yet. And so. When you start talking about applying AI to these huge aspects of healthcare, <clears throat> it can start getting pretty dicey pretty quickly. Um, okay, if AI makes a wrong move that ends up hurting somebody who's liable and there's liability concerns and there's privacy concerns and there's all that kind of stuff. So as we're going to continue with progress in healthcare in general, it's also going to be inhibited by the regulatory nature of healthcare and the red tapey nature of healthcare and the valid gigantic concerns with AI messing up in healthcare. It's one thing if AI messes up an email for you, but if it messes up um, medical care, that's obviously a totally different thing. Thus, we're getting to value-based care. Um, I think there's going to be a lot and very soon that can be done to promote and create better solutions for the value-based care space. Why? Value-based care at the end of the day really comes down to data. If you are good at data, you will be good at value-based care. And the reason is for a number of things. Number one, on the one side of it, um, when you start talking about payment models are based on benchmarks and are based on, it all comes down to data. How much does it cost to take care of these patients in a fee-for-service world? How much should we therefore create a benchmark for patients to, to, to take care of these patients in a value-based care world? How well are you, how complex is your patient panel? That's all data, right? Um, how well are you doing? Data. Are you actually, at the end of the day, the entire purpose of value-based care is, is, is better patient outcomes. We're focusing on the outcomes. How do you focus on outcomes? Data. Are these patients in the hospital less frequently? Are they not, uh, are their uh, rehospitalization rates down? Readmission rates down? Are they managing their conditions better? All this is in the data, is in the data, in the claims data, and in the. It's all about data when it comes to value-based care, and thus I think that uh, when it comes to data, that's also the core of AI. AI is also all about data. It's built on data. It it it, it can read massive data sets, and so the synergy of AI with value-based care specifically, much more than just regular healthcare, I think is mind-boggling and tremendous, and I am fired up about it. And that's why we're going to be talking a whole lot about it over the next long time. So um, I want to go through, I, I wrote down a couple things um, that, that, that show how this inherent fundamental and foundational synergy between AI and value-based care, which is the data aspect of it, which I think is the, is, is the foundation, which both are built on. Um, let's, let's go through a couple examples of how that can actually play out. So personalized care right, is one thing. When you talk about other aspects of healthcare, when you talk about take, like we talked about yesterday, robotic uh, surgery, you're talking about the ability for AI to take over the human, right? But what if AI can actually enable the human, the clinician, the nurse, the doctor, the caregiver, the care manager to provide better, more personalized care by being able to take a whole bunch of data for that specific patient and crunching it, you're able to do that. So um, so there's definitely going to be aspects there. Decision support, once again, providing the human caregiver with much better, much more condensed, much more, um, the data that's in a more, um, communicative way so that the doctor can then take that data and make a better decision that can be done tremendously easily through utilizing artificial intelligence. Um, population health management, patient engagement, you know, all these AI tools that are, cause they're actually able to understand the patient, understand what, what's going, what's, what the patient's going through and then provide data that is going to help support a more personalized, better, 
quicker, more efficient process of care for the patient. Um, and then finally, on the flip side of value-based care, we talk about uh, performance management. When you talk about reading the stats and reading the data and coming up with, hey, look how, look how good we did, um, or finding where we could have done better and what data metrics we need to work on for the next quarter, the next year, um, and, and noticing trends that are, that are pushing better or worse health outcomes for patients, AI is going to be tremendously powerful when put in there. So those are a couple of the thoughts. I think value-based care, no one's talking about this. And so I think that value-based care has a, a unique synergy with AI that the rest of healthcare does not. I think the rest of healthcare is a little further out before we start seeing robotic surgery and imaging being done completely by AI. But being able to support better patient outcomes is something that can happen today. Um, yeah, that's it for today. Please give me your feedback and um, like, subscribe, follow all the good things. I'm excited to talk more about AI in value-based care because people, change is a coming.